Dear students, welcome to EPG Paatshala. Today we are going to discuss on biomass as an energy source. Biomass, it is produced by means of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is a process where the carbon dioxide react with water in presence of sunlight and chlorophyll to produce carbohydrate along with oxygen and water. The photosynthesis, in this photosynthesis it is depending on the solar energy. So here the light energy is converted to chemical energy and it is stored as biomass energy. The biomass, the major part of the biomass lies in the green plants. We know that from ancient times we are depending on, the human beings are depending on the biomass for the fuel. So this biomass served as, serves as primary biofuel where it is directly used as the fuel wood and it can be used as a secondary biofuel where it is processed for another fuel products. The agrarian country like India are rich in agricultural residues and we can use this as a raw material for the renewable energy source or you can use it as a alternative energy source for the to meet the energy demand. In this module we are going to discuss on the energy efficiency in photosynthesis, what are the biomass resources, classification and how the what are the parameters by, uh, are to be taken care while selecting a biomass crop as an energy crop. We will see what are the conversion routes of the biomass to energy. We will see scope and the challenges of this biomass energy. Let's start with the energy efficiency in photosynthesis. The photosynthesis reaction is described by the Calvin cycle. It can be summarized as carbon dioxide plus 2 H2O that is one molecule of carbon dioxide reacts with two molecule of water to produce the carbo one molecule of carbohydrate if it is a glucose it is one molecule of glucose plus one molecule of oxygen and water molecule. So in one Calvin cycle one carbon dioxide molecule requires one ATP plus two ATP that is 3 ATP and 2 NADPH for the conversion. Therefore, for attaching 6 carbon units, 6 rounds of Calvin cycle is needed and a total of 6 into 3 ATPs and 6 into 2 NADPH are required for the energy expenditure. So that's why the final, uh, the photosynthesis reaction can be summed as 6 CO2 plus 12 H2O will give you 1 that is C6H12O6 that is glucose molecule plus 6O2 plus 6H2O. So the energy expenditure the require, uh, the, therefore for the production of one molecule of glucose 18 ATP plus 12 NADPH are required. So while adding this 18 ATP plus 12 NADPH to the equation 1 that is CO2 plus 2H2O gives CH2O N plus O2 plus H2O. So the energy expenditure, so the energy expenditure for synthesizing one glucose molecule from 6 CO2 is like this, 6 CO2 plus 18 ATP plus 12 H2O plus 12 NADPH is equal to C6H12O6 plus 18 ATP plus 18 PI plus 12 NADP plus, plus 6 H2O plus 6 O2. So the efficiency of photosynthesis can be given by delta G0 for the reduction of CO2 to C6H12O6 is plus 114 kilocalories per mole. NADP plus in the reduction process uses 2 electron and produces 2 NADPH. This process requires pumping of 4 photon to the photosystem 1 which is a light expenditure where electron is given out and that is replenished by photosystems 2 where which absorbs equal number of photons. So 
a total of eight photons are required to generate two NADPH molecules. One mole of 600 nanometer photon has energy of 47.6 kilocalories and so energy input of eight moles of photon is equal to 18 to 47.6 which is 381 kilocalories. Thus, overall efficiency of photosynthesis under standard condition is 114 divided by 381 multiplied by 100 which gives 30 percentage. So, this is the overall efficiency of photosynthesis that is only 30 percentage and the enzyme involved in this photosynthesis process is Rubisco. Biomass resources. The biomass is produced in land and in water. The in water, it is not, if it is produced in water, it is known as marine biomass and in freshwater biomass, if it is uh, in the fresh water. The biomass produced in water can be classified as marine biomass and freshwater biomass. If it is produced in the ocean, it is known as marine biomass. If it is in the freshwater water bodies like ponds, lakes, etc., it is known as freshwater biomass. Together it is known as aquatic biomass. It includes the plants as well as the algae. And the, the biomass which is produced in the, on the land is known as terrestrial biomass. It includes woody biomass, agricultural residues, energy crops, municipal or industrial waste. We can group this biomass resources as energy crops, woody biomass or forestry part, forestry waste like logs, woods, chips, barks, leaves which are uh, mostly seen or which are fall down. The forestry waste include logs, wood, chips, barks, fallen leaves and the sawdust which are produced during the processing of timber also adds to this way. While the agricultural residues, it is a byproduct of processing, harvesting of the agricultural crops. It is classified as primary residue and secondary residue. The primary residue which are those which produced after the harvesting, harvesting the yield of the crop in the field. For example, rice straw, wheat straw, maize straw, sugar cane trash, etc. It is mainly normally it is used as an animal feed and it is normally less available for energy production in India. Secondary residues are those which are generated during the processing. For example, rice husk, bagasse. This can be used, this can be used as potential energy sources. The biomass from crop residues is either of dry or wet biomass form. So the Important properties in energy generation from biomass lies on its calorific value, moisture content, fixed carbon content, ash content, etc. Agro-industrial waste include the waste mainly from the paper waste, molasses, that is the sugar industry, pulp waste from the food processing industry, textile fiber waste, etc. adds to this agro-industrial waste. Municipal waste. These are the waste collected from household which consists of organic portion that can be utilized for the energy recovery. Food and kitchen waste, green waste or other biodegradable portion of waste constitutes the principal solid waste. Sewage and animal manure from households can also be, can also has the energy potential, can also have the energy potential. Industrial waste. The waste and wastewater from the industries like paper and pulp industry, dairy industry, breweries, vegetable packaging industry, confectionery industry, it can, these waste can also be used as energy sources. Especially the food industry, the waste which is generated from food industry that is from hotels, restaurants, community kitchens are potential bioenergy sources. The bagasse which is a byproduct produced from the sugar mills after the juice extraction is a very good energy source that is used for the cogeneration to produce the electricity. Let's classify these energy crops. So many of the countries depend upon its natural vegetation or crop residues to meet their energy demand and we can categorize these bioenergy crops into first generation bioenergy crop, second generation bioenergy crop, 
third generation bioenergy crops and dedicated energy crops. First generation bioenergy crop, it can be abbreviated as FGECs. The food crops which are used as energy crop comes under this category. It includes the maize, that is corn, sugarcane, oil palm and drape seeds. The fermentation or transesterification process are used for the energy conversion. Fermentation in the case of carbohydrate sources or the starchy sources, starchy and sugar sources, transesterification for the oil seed crops. Second generation bioenergy crops, these are non-food feedstocks. These mainly include lignocellulosic crops that, is, that are having high energy content. It can be used for the fermentation and other thermochemical processes. The examples of the second generation energy crops are perennial forage crops like switchgrass, that is Panicum vergatum, red canary grass, Phalaris erundinacea, Luzerne or alfalfa, which is Medicago sativa, Napier grass, Penicetum purpureum, elephant grass, it's a hybrid, Miscanthus jejantius. Jejandius. The non edible oil crops like Jetropha carcass, which contains 30 to 50 percentage oil, and soap nut, that is Sapindus, Sapindus species, it contains around 52 percentage oil, that is uh, Sapindesmum, Corosi, and Trifoliatus. These are also comes under this second generation bioenergy crop. It also includes the residues from the forest products and field crops. So mainly the second generation bioenergy crop consists the non-food food feedstocks. The third generation bioenergy crop that is TGEZs is based on specially engineered energy crops and the algae. The dedicated bioenergy crops, these are the plant species which grow on purposefully for energy without compromising, compromising, without compromising on food. These species are known as the dedicated energy crops. It includes mainly the cellulosic crops like eucalyptus, poplar, willow, birch, jaint reed, jaint reed, reed canary grass, switch grass, elephant grass, johnson grass, sweet sorghum, castor bean, jetropha carcass, pungamia. This is current. Now what are the characteristics of bioenergy crops? It should have high growth rate and fast growth. The growth of biomass crop should be higher and are of short duration. It should have high biomass and energy yield. High calorific content, adaptable to marginal lands, low requirements of inputs for growth like the water requirement, fertilizer requirement and pesticide, the crop, crop protection uh, measures should be low. The energy input to these, that is the energy input to these crops should be less. Tolerance to biotic and abiotic stresses and the plants should have capability to minimize plant to plant competition and competition with weeds. Plant should have ability to increase radiation interception, water use efficiency, nutrient use efficiency, and hence improving the biomass and energy production. The plant species should have capability to adjust to thermal time sensitivity. Plant species should have high competitive capability for light utilization. Canopies should be of low extinction coefficient. It should leave characteristics, it should have leaf characteristics which are, which should have improved light absorption with optimum leaf area index and specific leaf area. Growing uh, the C4 and camp plants as energy crops to improve the water use efficiency. And the cost of production, the cost of production of the crop should be less. The biochemical composition of the plant is also important characteristics. You can see in this table the components, mainly the components of agricultural waste biomass. So they are rich in cellulose, hemicellulose and lignin content. Like hardwood stem consists of, the composition of hardwood stem is 40 to 50 percent cellulose, 
24 to 40% hemicellulose and 18 to 25% lignin. While softwood stem has more lignin content. You can see the um, composition of natural corn cobs, grasses, wheat straw, rice straw, leaves, switchgrass, etc. The biomass, the bioenergy roots from the biomass, that is the conversion roots of biomass to energy. This is, these technologies are based on type of the biomass, that is different physical nature and chemical composition of the biomass and the required energy form. So the type of the biomass and the energy form that we required, for example, heat, power or transport fuel. Based on that, we will use the conversion technology. So this conversion technologies are mainly classified into three groups, mainly into two like thermochemical and biochemical. And we can also see, uh, we can also add one more group into it that is chemical technologies. The thermochemical conversion process include pyrolysis, gasification, combustion and liquefaction. Combustion is the process of the biomass oxidation in air. During burning process, chemical energy in the biomass is converted to heat energy. It is further used to generate power and electricity with the help of boilers and steam turbines. This technology is suitable for biomass with less moisture content. Otherwise, we require pre-drying before the combustion. And the efficiency ranges from 20 to 40 percent. Gasification. The process where biomass is converted into combustible gas mixture by the partial oxidation of biomass at high temperature. So here the biomass is burnt, biomass is burnt with sufficient oxygen and the main product is syngas. In, in gasification process, the partial oxidation of biomass at high temperature is happened. happened. In pyrolysis, it is the process of converting biomass mainly to liquid fuel in the absence of air and it has an efficiency of 80 percent. The biochemical conversion includes fermentation and anaerobic digestion. Fermentation is the technology where the sugar or starch is converted to liquid fuel with the help of micro, especially the yeast. The main products are bioethanol, biobutanol and the biomass used for fermentation in sugar crops. The biomass used for fermentation either be from sugar crops or starch crops or even the lignocellulosic materials can also be used. Anaerobic digestion. In the process, in this process, the organic matter is converted to mixture of gases with manure as the byproduct. So we are getting the energy and manure by this process. And it is happening or this process occurs under anaerobic condition with the help of microbes. The major products of this process are biogas and biohydrogen. And this anaerobic digestion is suitable for biomass with high moisture content of around 80 to 90 percent. We can add transesterification to chemical technology where in this process the oil or fat that is triglyceride reacts with alcohol to produce fatty acid ester that is alkyl ester of fatty acid that is biodiesel. Here the main feedstocks are the oil seeds, oil seed crops. This is a schematic diagram of different bioenergy products and its roots. Oil seed crops can be used, can be converted by combustion or transesterification. In combustion, it produces heat and power, while in transesterification, it produces biodiesel and syndiesel. Sugar and starchy crops. It mainly converted by means of hydrolysis and fermentation process. It, is, it produces bioethanol, lignocellulosic biomass. Pre-treatment and fermentation produces bioethanol. It can be used for gasification. It can be used for combustion. It can be used for pyrolysis and anaerobic digestion. So accordingly, the products varies. 
Even the biodegradable waste can be used for fermentation, gasification, pyrolysis and anaerobic digestion. And the photosynthetic microbes that is algae, algal biomass and bacterial biomass, it is used as an energy source and converted by means of bi biochemical conversion routes, mainly biochemical conversion routes like photolysis, that is direct or indirect photolysis, fermentation like dark fermentation or photo fermentation to produce biohydrogen. And it can also be uh, used for the production of syn diesel and the biodiesel. And it can be used to produce heat and the power. So these are the different energy routes, energy production routes to produce the liquid and gaseous fuel from the biomass. Pelletization, it is the process of compressing the biomass into pellet form. This densified biofuel have homogeneous size that improves the thermal energy production in comparison to the traditional domestic wood. So it improves its efficiency. The steps involved in pelletization include the feedstock storage, removal of undesirable impurities, size reduction, transportation by these different conveyors, biomass drying, mixing and conditioning, mixing and conditioning pellet production and finally the cooling and moisture removal from the pellets. Torrefaction is an advanced thermal pretreatment process in which biomass is converted to densified coal, densified coal like solid biofuel. In this process, slow heating of biomass in an inert environment at a temperature of 200 to 300 degrees Celsius in the absence of oxygen occurs. The factors determine the conversion of biomass into energy. Moisture content, uh, the moisture content represents the intrinsic water which is present in the biomass. Calorific value, so the latent heat of water vapor reduces the high calorific value or the gross calorific value to lower, heater, lower heating value or the net calorific value. Proportion of fixed carbon and volatiles, ash residue content, silica content, cellulose lignin ratio all these are the all these affects the biomass conversion into energy scope of biomass as an energy source the biomass is considered as a sustainable energy source because of its abundancy and availability in comparison to the petroleum products so biomass is abundantly available raw material on the earth it is biomass has a potential, the potential of waste to energy recovery. Agricultural biomass includes the broad range of importantly wasted energy source. India is the world's biggest producer of paddy after China and it produces around 98 million tons of paddy with around, with roughly 130 million tons of straw of which only Half is used as fodder and half is lost or which is unutilized. India also produces 3,50,000, around 3,50,000 tons of sugar cane that yield about 50 million tons of cane trash. So these are very attractive biomass resources for the fuel production. The biomass with high silica content that is paddy straw has no commercial value and is therefore almost burned in our country. Besides these agro residues from the processing of maize, cotton, millets, pulse, sunflower and other stalks, bulrushes, groundnut shells, coconut trash, etc. all produces, all are wasted and it can be used as good biofuel resource. So it is the abundancy and availability and Another one is the environmental advantages that is provided by the modern biomass energy. It decreases the air pollution and diminishes atmospheric carbon dioxide accumulation. It is in contribution to the reduction of greenhouse gases and other environmental benefits. For example, Miscanthus species is capable of carbon fixation of 5.2 to 7.2 ton carbon per hectare per year. And then another scope is its sustainability. The use of forest residues could lead to either a positive or negative effect. The rate of carbon sequestration into biomass or 
soil through the decomposition of residues is slower than the rates of forest waste combustion. Harvesting of forest remains, the harvesting of forest remains results in the buildup of CO2 in the atmosphere. Through increased use of forest residues by thinning and sustainable management strategies, forest growth can be greater and fires also could be prevented, so thereby reducing overall CO2 emission. So the bioenergy is a sustainable energy source if it is used in a judicious way. The energy crops could also contribute to emission reduction if they were cultivated sustainably on waste or surplus land. The advancements in bioconversion technology and biomass production have made bioenergy competitive with fossil fuel based energy generation. The enhancement of energy security and diversity of energy supply, the employment generation and generation at rural development, the employment generation especially in the rural areas and the development of these uh, rural areas, restoration of degraded lands as a result of plantation and possibility of increase in biodiversity, the transfer of modern bioenergy technology to developing countries will be further encouraged by the clean development mechanism of the Kyoto Protocol. So this CDM can earn the profit to the country. High energy yield from biomass, it has high energy yield from the biomass. The energy yield of hybrid poplar is around 6.15, 6.15 megajoule per meter square per year. Switchgrass is around 5.8 megajoule per meter square per year. And reed canary grass has an energy yield of 4.9 megajoule per meter square per year. These are the scopes. Now, it has some challenges in this in its utilization. The most economical option is to focus on better utilization of the biomass waste through improved collection of agro residues and the cattle dung, the better use of waste from sugar mills and wood processing units, enlarging waste product use like briquettes of, so, um, briquettes of sawdust. <coughs> so these are, the, these are some of the economical options. Sustained supply of biomass will require enhanced production of energy crops. So this is another challenge. The potential competition form the land and the biomass uses. It should be managed judiciously. The use of conventional crop for the power consumption can also be utilized with careful consideration of the availability of land and food demand. In the, in the medium term, Bioethanol from lignocellulosic biomass could be produced on marginal, degraded and surplus lands which may provide large biomass stocks. In the long term, algal biomass can be a significant, can give, can make a significant contribution. The productivity of food and biomass for the bioenergy needs to be adequately addressed. Transforming the forest land into agricultural land for growing bioenergy crop which would store less carbon or just combusting beyond excess forest growth levels would result in a substantial volume of additional carbon dioxide emission. The conversion of bioenergy feedstock into final products, that is the technologies of the lignocellulosic biomass to bioenergy are only at its developmental stage. So far, only limited capacity is commercialized and capital costs are still high compared to conventional biofuel generation plants, especially in the first generation biofuels. Economic viability is also possess some challenge for the existing production capacity of biofuels. However, the production of food and fuel from same piece of land is more promising. Considering the tremendous potential of the second generation biofuel, the developed nations are investing in a big way in this bioenergy research and development to the biotechnological applications. Another challenge is that the old residues are not available for bioenergy production because they are needed for the livestock feed and litter and to maintain the soil fertility. Now, nowadays the biomass burning, nowadays the farmers because of their time constraint to the crop cycle, to their crop cycle have made the habit of burning the 
biomass. So during this burn, the burning of large quantities of biomass contributes to air pollution and is responsible for the global warming. These are the challenges which is faced in this bio, bioenergy sector. The bioenergy standards for the sustainable market growth. The quality control of bioenergy identified as a key factor for the sustainable market growth of these biofuels and can lead to many issues. ISO 13065-2015 applies to this criteria, it specifies principles and indicators for bioenergy supply chain to assess environmental, social and economic aspects of sustainability. It applies to the whole supply chain or parts of a supply chain or a single process in the supply chain. The ISO 13065-2015 applies to various bioenergy forms irrespective of its raw material, geographic location and technology or the end use. It is intended to facilitate comparability, comparability intended to facilitate comparability of various bioenergy processes or products. It can be used to promote comparability of bioenergy and other, other energy options. What is the bioenergy consumption pattern in the world? The biomass supplies nearly 50,000 exajoules of energy at the global level. It represents 10% of worldwide annual primary energy consumption. And the share of renewables in the world energy production is around 13%. Of this, 77% accounts for bioenergy, primary raw material, that is wood biomass, agricultural crops and byproducts, and the municipal and industrial waste. The biomass is primarily used for heating and cooking purposes in most of the countries. Brazil and USA produce more than 80% of total global energy production from the biomass. The other countries like India, Indonesia, China, Argentina, Australia, Canada, Colombia, Mexico, South Africa, Zambia, etc. introduced their country the biofuel friendly policies. If you if we look into the biomass energy scenario in India, the contribution of biomass is around 32% of the total primary energy consumption. The contribution of biomass power is 18.63%, cogeneration from cogeneration from bagasse is 5.31%, and the waste to energy is 2.88%. The Ministry of New and Renewable Energy promote biomass gasifier based power plants for electricity generation from locally available biomass sources like the crop residue. The crop residues like bagasse, rice husk, straw, cotton stock, coconut shells, soya husk, de-oiled cakes, coffee waste, jute waste, groundnut shells, sawdust etc. are used for this purpose. The surplus biomass availability of bio the surplus biomass availability in India is estimated around 120 to 150 million metric tons per annum of the agricultural and forestry residues. And the estimated potential from these, res from these residues is around 18,000 megawatt and an additional 7,000 megawatt power is produced through Bagasse cogeneration. Punjab has highest potential for bioenergy followed by the Maharashtra and other leading states for this biomass power projects are Chhattisgarh, Uttar Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu. And the states which are leaders in the Bagasse cogeneration projects are Andhra, Karnataka, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu and Uttar Pradesh. So to conclude, the photosynthesis is described by the Calvin cycle and we have seen the efficiency of this photosynthesis is around 30%. We have seen the different biomass resources, we have classified them as the energy crops, first generation, second generation and third generation and also the dedicated crops. We have also seen different characteristics of a biomass crop as the bioenergy crop. For example, we have seen that it should have high or it should have fast growth, it should have high energy yield or biomass yield and it should have high uh, tolerance to the adverse conditions, it requires only less inputs, it should have high water use efficiency and nutrient use efficiency and some 
improvements in its leaf area index so that it can absorb more sunlight etc. We have seen different conversion technologies of the uh, energy production from the biomass like thermochemical including the pyrolysis, gasification, combustion while the biochemical conversion routes includes the fermentation and anaerobic digestion. Also the transesterification of the oil seeds for the production of biodiesel. We have seen the various products and as well as the conversion routes. And the factors like moisture content in it, the high calorific value, the silica content, cellulose lignin ratio and the, uh, the fixed carbon versus the volatiles also determine the performance of a crop as bioenergy crop. We have seen the scope of this bioenergy as an energy source as well as its challenges and its utilization. Thank you.